So thanks again for uh, coming tonight and we're now starting a new topic, the eye. We've got under our belt uh, basic lens ray tracing formulas, some wave concepts I did sneak in along the way, um, particularly that idea of the optical minimum path length. But now let's go back and look at what I consider the most important um, instrument that we have for sensing is our eyes. So it's an amazing optical device. It's not a perfect one, but it is really remarkable how it works. So let's get somewhat familiar with ourselves here. And we're going to talk about correcting vision for the eye, etc. cetera. And then, and then we'll move to optical instruments to finish off this section of the course. OK, so the human eye uh, has a convex lens. It's a grin lens. So grin means graded, um, oh, I don't have it quite here, graded, oh yes, graded refractive index. Um, lens. So what does that mean, graded refractive index? It's a kind of special redistribution of material where the index in the center of the lens is higher than outside. And we, we actually engineer a lot of optical devices this way by just doping, for example, germanium in glass raises the refractive index. So if I put high germanium concentration here and less outside, then wavefronts coming through there slow down. Then the wavefront curves and it focuses even if it's a flat piece of glass. So this is used on the on, in our eye as one way to increase the strength of focusing by making the refractive index in the center axis stronger than on the sides. It of course has a big bulge here, so we know from the lens maker formula that this big radius here is one of the strongest focusing parts of the surface, but uh, of, of the overall eye. But this is actually not the lens of the eye. And so we'll talk a bit more about the parts on the next slide here. In here is a highly transparent vitreous uh, liquid. It has a refractive index of 1.337. It's not surprisingly, it's just a bit bigger, but close to that of water. All right, so most of our body's made from, of water. So, um, so that's the standard thing. This is not a symmetric lens. So the focal length on the right would not be the same as the focal length on the left because of this liquid here. The sensor here is a retina. So there's sensors built in here and the highest density is right at the back of the eye. And there's two types of sensors. There's rods and cones. So rods, there's gazillions of them, 125 million. They're two microns in size. They give us the best resolution and they're very sensitive, so they're best used in night vision. Our color vision is by cones. There's fewer of them, and they're more concentrated in the center. So if you really think about what you see, it's black and white on the edges and more colorful, rich, and high resolution in the center. Your brain can't process all the information so acutely. It, it only focuses intensely in one place at the time, and the brain kind of fools us, filling in missing information as needed. So, so, the, so the really high processing power is down in here. Now, the, set, the nerves um, that come from the rods and cones then go into the brain through the optic nerve. And so this is a very busy communication highway. And in fact, there's no sensors at that spot. So if you drew uh, two points on paper, I forget how far apart, but that far apart, if you move them in and out, they disappear. And that's because you're suddenly imaging those two spots right over where the optical disc is, this, where the nerves are, and um, they disappear because the sensors aren't there. So you have a blind spot. We all have this one blind spot. Okay. Um, okay, the other interesting thing is that the retina is curved. So it's not a flat sensor. Does that mean that we're seeing distorted things? Well, not really. So I'm imaged upside down, first of all, is the first thing you've learned inside the back of your eye on your retina. And I'm actually curved like this back there, OK? Literally. And I don't look that way because your brain has learned to correct the distortion. And I talk about accurate focusing. It turns out that aberrations, when you bring rays at this angle, it can't focus to there. That's too far away for this lens. So the curved surface is sort of natural aberrations of that type of lens. So when I talk about distortions, if I take a flat CCD sensor against the lens, it gets distorted at the corners, and I have to build other lenses to correct it. 
Otherwise, if I could build a curved CCD sensor like the eye, it would more naturally follow what a spherical lens can provide on accurate imaging. So this is just nature's way of solving all the aberrations by aberrating the back plane of the eye. It doesn't make it a plane, it makes it a curved surface and then you get pristine imaging all around um, the surface there. And the brain fixes up all the other distortions. So we learn just by experience every time you miss and touch something, you correct that. Your brain actually is a map of correction. So even though things are distorted here, it doesn't matter. I'm upside down. It, you learn by experiencing the real world against what you see to, to make those corrections intrinsically in your mind. So very powerful, interesting, forgiving kind of um, overall process. Okay, so there's the first slide. You can go here. It's really cool looking at this. This is 3D. It can move around in, you, you, um, in front of you and you can see um, kind of through things. So, so you can move in closer to the eye and see these additional points. So it turns out this first, there's a protective layer um, and then there's the cornea. And this is the area where laser surgery is done if you've ever had your eye correction done. They come in with lasers and they ablate away parts of this. They might lift up a flap and close it back down. That does the correction, but that's not the lens. The lens is in here. It's a soft thing, less soft in my eye because I'm older. And the muscles pull on this, and that's how you correct your vision. By pulling and squeezing this down or, or stretching it, you're changing the curvature shape here particularly against the background um, liquid, and that then changes the focus of the eye. All right, so um, that's the ciliary muscle that pulls on that. Um, and here is a pupil, so that's an aperture stop. We call it a pupil in the eye. And, you know, that's not what drug enforcement officers look at. To, um, it's not designed to tell whether you're on drugs or not. It is to control the amount of light. So in bright light, it closes down a lot. It stops down to reduce the amount of light so that you keep your sensors in a good sensing range. It protects your eye. And when it's very dark, it opens as wide as possible. Okay. Um, okay, now, a normal eye. So there's no such thing as a normal eye. We just talk about an average eye. Ideally, what, what are the average ranges? And there's a big difference between older and younger people and between individuals and age groups, etc. Some people need glasses, some don't. So we need to, though, do optical design so we have certain conventions. The first thing to think about is what happens if I completely... Um, relax my eye. What, what can I see? What am I imaging? So starlight, for example, if I just lay down on the ground, look up, my stars, the stars are actually sharp for me. Uh, when I was younger, I had, let's say, normal vision. So I could see this, these stars perfectly imaged, but if something came close, I have to, actually have to strain my eye to see it. So that's when the muscles kick in. So we call no accommodation the idea where the eye is relaxed. And for a healthy, sort of normal person, that is considered imaging to infinity. Okay? So it's why it's dangerous to use cell phones while you're driving because you're trying to see at infinity, but you can't do texting. So then you muscle up your eye and you can see close and, and you have no clue what's going on far away, which is very dangerous when you're driving, especially when it's a serious text message. So don't do it. Okay. So, so then the question is, how far can you push this? Well, if you're very um, young, quite a lot, this thing is very flexible. Um, you might see seven centimeters away as a teenager. Okay, so I remember when I was young, I could do that. Now I'm way out there somewhere, so th I, I need reading glasses to see things up close, to adjust things. So what we do is we average over age groups and say the near point is 25 centimeters. That, that is a good design. Let's assume people can see 25 centimeters away on typical. So I, I can read 25 centimeters away only with my glasses. That's a kind of comfortable distance. Why is the near point important? Well, if we want to see something small, what do we do? We bring it closer. And what happens as it comes closer? It gets bigger on my retina. And I can resolve more features of it. I can see smaller things up to a limit. So on average, 25 centimeters is the closest we'll use in our design. Um, of criteria of how our eyes work and how instruments work with our eyes to improve um, resolution, imaging, etc. Okay, so before the next slide, um, 
So where do we do corrective laser surgery? In the cornea, right, up here. And does F not equal Fi for the eye? No, so it's going to be different on the two sides because it's liquid on the right um, and um, air on the left. So it's an asymmetric case. Okay, any questions then about these nice pictures and our eyes? Yes? Um, does both eyes have the same F not and F I? Um, no. <laughs> and even the focal length vertically and horizontally can be different. So our eyes are not perfect. And in some people, you won't, a lot of us, we won't notice the differences. But if you go and measure them, you'll see some differences between left and right eyes. Symmetry, you know, we all like symmetry, but um, we're, some of us are less lucky than others with symmetry in the eye. Okay. Okay, so accommodation. Here's some ray trajectories for the eye. So if we have a normal eye and we're looking at starlight, starlight is parallel rays coming in, so they should image with the eye completely relaxed, perfectly at the back of the retina. So there's the ray trajectory for that. That should be very clear, I hope, to all, all, all of you. Um, and if we want to see something close, so if I move an object closer, then I have diverging rays. And if I didn't correct my eye, the diverging rays, where would they focus? It would focus over here somewhere, right? So what I need to do is make the focal length stronger, shorter, make the lens stronger. I need to make it thicker in the middle so that I can image here. And so if I can bring this closer and closer until the muscles and the lens can't react anymore, and that's called the near point. So to a normal person, the far point is infinity, a healthy normal eye, and the near point is considered to be 25 centimeters. And out, that's the limit. That's all we can do with the eye. So it's a neat instrument. It automatically does this um, flexing of the lens so that we're always imaging pristinely here. Okay, so we've defined these two ideas, the far point and near point for ideal condi um, conditions. And I've defined accommodation and the average near point being 25 centimeters. So there's the reference point for a healthy eye. I'm going to switch over and now and talk about some of the vision problems and how we correct them. So myopia. All right, so this is more common than hyperopia. Myop myopia is a nearsighted uh, condition where far points, um, hang on, this is a nearsighted person. So what it means is starlight is out of focus. You cannot see infinity. It, far point is closer than, in, than infinity. Starlight is impossible to see. So what happens in myopia is your imaging range, instead of being infinity to 25 centimeters, might be 10 meters to 20 centimeters. So generally, if you have a healthy eye, but with myopia, the tuning range is shifted in. It's kind of like your retina has, is, is too, um, what do you call it? Um, so we can't see that. So your retina is actually sitting here too close to the lens, and you need some kind of correction to, um, to expand that range so you can see starlight again. Hyperopia. A far-sighted person has no problem seeing starlight, but things up close can't be seen. So for them, the near point has moved out, and that infinity point has actually moved past infinity, whatever that is. So it's actually, you've got a tuning range of your eye that you can't use practically. So eyeglasses are perfect ways, or contact lenses are perfect ways, then to bring this back into a normal range. So even though you have a perfect eye, you can tune the muscles around, we all have different ranges of this, and we consider the healthy average person to be a, 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 a focusing imaging range of 25 centimeter object to infinity. And so myopia moves that closer, hyperopia moves it farther away. Yes? What does it mean if you mean bifocals? So bifocals is uh, a problem where you can't adjust the lens anymore. So in my case, uh, which is normal, my, my lens is getting stiffer. I know people who are using lasers to ablate little puncture holes so it can be more sponge-like and flexible, but I won't let them do my eye yet. So we'll see if that ever gets approved. But it just became too stiff. So it gets sort of stuck seen far away, um, and my near point is moving away as I age. That will happen to all of you, regretfully. Um, <laughs> You know, so I'm, I'm there, so I, I have, to carry, have to get used to wearing glasses, which I never needed when I was young. Yes? Um, can one eye be simultaneously far and uh, nearsighted? 
Um, I certainly can't do that, but maybe some people can. I don't know the answer, truthfully. It, it doesn't seem natural to do that because it would put the brain into a strange state that you're trying to image two different things at the same time. I don't think it's natural to be able to process different things like that at the same time. Okay. It'd be pretty neat, though, to have, have that, that would allow you to text and drive. <laughs> yes? Oh, that's a long story for a beer after. <laughs> I, um, I haven't done it myself, and I'm not a contender, I don't think, because my, I've narrowed my range. So if I had myopia, for example, it would be great to sh reshape my lens to, to change the range out here. What I could do is I, I can see far, and what would happen is if I correct my eye, I could see near but not far, so I would need glasses for driving, etc. So it's not good for older people. And for younger people, um, there's pros and cons. Just do some research and and um, um, get, get a better procedure than poor procedure and make sure there's benefits there that you don't end up in one of those sort of small chance cases that you don't get a big improvement. You don't get perfect vision, but you get an improvement. Yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with myopia, you, people with myopia can go and they do things like this. Oh, I can see that. I, I can't, right? Okay. So they can really see highly magnified things close to the eye. So if you have hyperopia, you're putting things far away, but now they're too far to resolve and see. So you're lost with reading unless you have corrective lenses. Okay. So astigmatism is a worse condition where you need to make a saddle horse kind of shaped lens. So if you think of a saddle horse, it has a positive negative radius of curv curvature depending on x and y. And what it means is you have a focal, um, you have a different, say, focal length if, if the astigmatism is symmetric for the vertical and horizontal imaging. So it blurs things, and it, it sort of blurs things for all conditions, but you can correct that with lenses that um, line up. Um, you can measure this, um, this uh, astigmatism and, and have corrective optics. You need cylindrical lenses to correct these kinds of things, because you want to change the focal length on one axis but not the other to tune it. So this is a corrective procedure. Even in laser surgery, these things can be built into the laser pattern um, corrections. OK? OK, so, there's, um, so we're not going to worry about correcting astigmatism here, but we're going to talk about how you can correct myopia and hyperopia. OK, I'm going to poke a little question at you. We all wear our glasses. Um, if you need glasses, we wear them on our nose. And they're about one eyeball away. And there's a reason for that, that that's actually an optimum distance. If you move it away, you know, everything blurs or it gets bigger, smaller, or even goes upside down, depending on what kind of glasses you have. But it turns out there's something special about being this distance away. So why is that is a question that, um, if we have time, we'll get to today or answer on Monday. OK, so ready? Next slide. So here, um, let's try to now think a little more quantitatively. It's still qualitative, but start to get quantitatively. And I'm going to show an example of how we correct your eyes, what your eye doctor would do or, or prescriptionist would do to correct your lenses. So in myopia, here's the reference point. I have, the, oh, I have some statements here, but I'll leave them off for now. Let me just explain this, and then you can read that later. So if you have normal vision, parallel light, that's right, not normal vision. If you're trying to see starlight and you have myopia, you're focusing too close. Okay? So you can't see starlight. So as you bring an object closer, that imaging point will move away, but you still can't see anything until that goes to the surface. So the far point might only be two or three meters away if you have really bad myopia. So you have to bring a star up really close. Well, that's impossible. You have to bring an object up very close. And then it will first image here. And that would be for the unaccommodated, no accommodated eye. So when this is fully relaxed. And so that is the closest you can see under the relaxed eye conditions, the distant object. Anything farther than that is completely blurry. So you need to wear glasses for driving, walking even, et cetera. OK, now if I turn my lens on, if I turn the muscle on, then I can actually see much nearer. So I would have a near point that is very close to the eye. 
much closer than 25 centimeters, much smaller than 25 centimeters. And that would be my tuning range. And if I want to correct this, what do I do? How do I correct this condition? Well, what we would like to do is take the far point to infinity. That's all I need to do. I need to make rays coming from infinity. So here's the correction for the unaccommodated eye. I take rays from infinity. And what do I need to make them do? I need them to make them appear to come from where? The eye's far point. Right? I can see those rays if I have myopia with the relaxed eye. So I take parallel rays and I use a lens here to make them appear to come from here. So what is that doing is it's taking parallel light and diverging them to the right. So what kind of lens should that be if it takes parallel light and makes them diverge? It's a negative focal length lens. A diverging lens is required for myopia. Right? A diverging lens is required for myopia. And exactly what I need to do, I can apply the lens maker's formula. How do I visualize that? What is the object distance? Okay. What is the image distance? Let's say that's one meter. What should the image distance be? Go ahead. Okay. See, yeah. So one meter is the magnitude is right, but why is it wrong? Okay. It's got to be negative because I want the image on the left side of the lens. So I make it negative 100. And now I can be an optometrist. I just calculate the focal length <laughs> of the lens. Okay. That's it. 1 over infinity minus 1 over 1 meter okay, equals 1 over the focal length. So I need a focal length of minus 1 meter, 1 diopter. And I've got, I can now see a normal kind of range. So what would happen is I can see infinity, and then my super near point, which is not shown here, will move out. Okay, so when I'm looking at something closer, I can normally see something this close. It's really from here, but it appears to come from there, which my eye can still image. So there is how lens is correct, a, a starlight versus a nearby object. Okay. And so here's some explanations to help us see that there. So, so it looks like most of you are following that. Is that that's pretty good? You can follow that. Good. Okay. So hyperopia. So things just reverse. I've got. I'll, I'll put the answers this time just to compare how this works. So hyperopia. I, I have starlight, and I. I um, if I relax my eye, it, it, it's blurry. But if I strain my eye, um, it's not shown here, I can make that point move to here. So there's no problem seeing starlight. Okay? Now if I strain my eye some more, I can see objects. But that's the nearest point I can see. 25 centimeters might be here, let's say. But I can only bring things, let's say, 2 meters away. So in, in that hyperopia, I can only see things quite far away. Okay? So for example, if I wanted to see 25 centimeters like a normal person, it's focusing over here. So how do I correct hyperopia? If I want to see something 25 centimeters away, what do I need to do? I need to help this lens. I need to use a positive or negative lens? Positive lens. I need to focus strongly to bring this point to there. So here is a positive lens which shows how we would map a source that's 25 centimeters away. This is a real object. And what the converging lens does is it, it doesn't focus this light. What it does is it takes diverging rays and makes them less diverging. So it makes the rays appear to come from where? My near point. There's the near point. I need to take 25 centimeters and make it appear to come from, let's say, two meters away. So how do I correct? this condition with this lens, I take an object distance which is 25 centimeters away and I make it appear to come from an image distance of, you got the sign right? <laughs> minus, 
minus 2 meters. And then I can calculate 1 over f. Right, so we can now double the number of our customers in our little <laughs> optics shop. Okay. Okay, so there's myopia and hyperopia. So why can't we see underwater? Just a side question before we do the last example. Why can't we see underwater? Should just go back to here. Yeah, if I put water in front of this, I change the focal length of the eye. And the index of air versus water, 1.3 something versus 1, it's such a big index, it changes the power, it reduces the power of the lens so much that we um, are imaging in front of our retina all the time. So we just can't see underwater. Can anyone see underwater? Who has? Yeah. Some of you? Oh, really? Okay, cool. <laughs> okay. So, so you have to wear glasses in our regular environment. Okay. Um, oh, I'm not going to be able to get through to the example. You're right. I'm going to jump ahead one section. Let's let's just let's just finish with an example. So, so I'm going to I jumped ahead a few slides here. Okay. So I, I I taught you how to correct lenses. Here's a real numerical example. Let's just get this under our belt to finish off the lecture. So here's a person with myopia. Um, I'll talk about the magnification later. So let's correct this. I have, um, I have this problem. It's exactly two meters, OK, far point. And I'm going to assume the eye has a focal length of 16 millimeters. So I want to find a solution for eyeglasses here. What lens do I use to correct a person with a far point of two meters? So what do I want to have? I want to have a far point of infinity. Okay. So if I run through this, I'm going to put a lens, um, a distance d equals 1.6 centimeters away from the eye. That's for no magnification. That's Monday's lecture. What I do is I take a far point and I move it to infinity. And so I use this equation here. I put infinity here. Okay. I put in two meters there, okay. and I solve for f, and now I have a slight correction, which I didn't tell you about. Okay. So if we're really fussy, this lens is 1.6 centimeters away. So the far point, which is 200 um, centimeters, is reduced to the lens by 1.6 centimeters. I am correcting for the distance of the lens, a little bit closer to the object than my eyeball is. So if I take the far point, reduce it by the distance the lens sits off my head, I get 200 uh, minus 1.6, but I have to make it negative. So now I have SI equal to minus 198 centimeters. It's a very small, almost not important correction. And so ideally then I choose F equal to the negative of SI, uh, sorry, F equal to SI, which is negative 198. I use a diverging lens of minus 198 centimeters. And so now I can see starlight, and my near point um, should be more normal with other people. So th the answer here, the near point will also move out. We don't know if it'll be exactly 25 centimeters. We're all individuals, but it will move out, and you'll have kind of normal vision with those glasses. All right. 8 o'clock. It's time to relax. Enjoy the weekend. Thank you.